Welcome to Duck Church's Good Friday service. A world that could not understand the power of love turned upon the one for whom they had waited for so many generations. They tortured and killed the one who could save them. So that we do not forget, let us read again the story. Lesson 1. Judas betrays Jesus. John chapter 18 verses 1 through 11. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Lesson two, trial with Caiaphas. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him to the first Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the priest of the year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Meanwhile, the high priest questions Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I will always taught in synagogues or the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you shall answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said nothing wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas in the high priest.
Meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire, warming himself, they asked him again, you're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, no, I am not. But one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, didn't I see you out there in the olive grove with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately a rooster crowed. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. How many times we have denied you, O Christ, when we do not notice the hungry and the homeless, when we fail to hear the cries of loneliness, when we walk past the victim en route to our own safety, the cock crows also in our lives, and we are as guilty as Peter. Forgive us, O Christ. Amen. Be aware that our denials cannot stop the love of Jesus for us. Amen. Lesson four, trial with Pilate. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth, retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one of the prisoners at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Jesus sentenced to be crucified. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and said, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. 
the Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law, and according to that law he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from, he asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refu refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. So they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called the Place of Skulls, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek so that many people could read it. Then the leading priests objected and said to Pilate, change it from the king of the Jews to, he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate replied, no, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they, dem they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bod bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let us throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scriptures that said, they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. This is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and, for, and to fulfill the scriptures, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it 
and put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. When Jesus has ta had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Lesson 6, Jesus' Death Proven, John 19, verses 31 through 37. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was a special Sabbath, because the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken 
and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus. Then they broke the legs of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of water and blood. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that, so that you will also believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. From the book of John, chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he was afraid of the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there.
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life.